8.3b, Describing Cross Sections. This is a right rectangular pyramid with a non-square base. In a right pyramid, the point where the triangular sides meet is centered over the base. It's not leaning to one side. Pyramids are named for the shape of their base. The base is a rectangle. Each side is a triangle. But since it's named for its base and the base is a rectangle, this is a rectangular prism. So pyramids are named for the shape of their base. This is a triangle, so this is a triangular pyramid. This is a rectangle, that's a rectangular pyramid. This is a pentagon, so that's a pentagonal pyramid. This is a hexagon, so this is a hexagonal pyramid. And this is an octagon, this is an octagonal pyramid. And right three-dimensional figures can be compared to oblique three-dimensional figures. So here's a right cylinder. Here's an oblique cylinder. See how it's leaning? Here's a right triangular prism. Here's an oblique triangular pr prism. Here's a right pyramid, right rectangular pyramid. Here's an oblique pyramid. Here's a right cone. Here's an oblique cone. So do you see how the oblique ones are kind of leaning off to the side and the right ones are straight up? Here we have right rectangular prisms. And here are some of the ways we can cut cross sections of a right rectangular prism. We can cut it vertically this way. We can cut it horizontally. We can also cut it vertically this way or on a slant this way or on a slant that way. We can even cut off a corner and make a triangular cross section. We can see that the plane doesn't have to be perfectly horizontal or vertical. The plane can slant in various directions. Since a pyramid has no curves, it would be impossible for a cross section to be circular. Horizontally, we would see the same shape as the base, if the base is a rectangle, the cross section would be a rectangle. If the base is a square, the cross section would be a square. And if the base is a triangle, the cross section would be a triangle. Vertically, we'd see a triangle. If we slice one side, we can make a trapezoidal cross section. That means our cross section would be in the shape of a trapezoid. On a cone or pyramid, the lower the cross section, the larger the cross section area. The higher the cross section, the smaller the cross section area. The very top of this cone and this pyramid, that's called the apex. Let's take a look at these cubes. This cube had a cross section cut in the shape of a triangle by cutting off the corner. And this one went deeper into the corner and it made a trapezoid cross section. This one went on a slant this way and it cut it on a slant and made a hexagon. We could square, we could do it like this on a slant from this corner to this corner and do a rectangle. And this is the hexagon. So it's kind of slanting back a little bit and it's on an angle. So depending on the direction and angle of the plane, the cross section will form a different shape. This square pyramid has a plane horizontally and it's making a square cross section. This rectangular prism is making a square cross section and this pentagonal prism is making a pentagon shaped cross section. This pyramid is making a triangle-shaped cross-section. This rectangular prism is making a rectangular or rectangle-shaped cross-section. And here we'll have a circle as our cross-section. A cylinder can even have a rectangular cross-section if we come straight down vertically, or an oval, an ellipse, if we go on an angle. If we need to describe the figure we would get from a given plane, intersecting a given three-dimensional figure, it helps to first draw the figure and the plane. If two cones were joined at their apexes and we sliced straight down one side, we would make two arch-shaped cross-sections. 
See? We're finished with 8.3. We're going to move on to 8.4 about angle relationships. 8.4a is measuring angles. So we're going to need our protractors. As you're trying to find cross sections, use your imagination. Try to picture in your head what the cross section would look like. Try to imagine it. Have a great day and please join me for our next lesson. Bye.